we have been talking about uh, canonical distribution and uh, what we mean by canonical distribution is that uh, we have uh, a bath and we have a system here and this system is connected to the bath and uh, let us call this system as A uh, and let us say this is A prime and say this is A naught. Uh, so, our system is A which is allowed to exchange energy uh, with A prime and A prime essentially consists of uh, uh, several uh, copies of A itself and uh, so these members of the ensemble they exchange energies with each other and come to an equilibrium temperature uh, T. And um, so, uh, this A0 which is a combined A and A prime uh, that is considered as an isolated system. All right. So, what we have derived is that what is the probability that our system is occupying a certain energy level E r and uh, this the normalized probability is given by exponential uh, beta E r summation over r exponential minus beta E r and uh, this denotes the probability of uh, that our system which is A occupies or is found in one of the available energy states E r. Okay. Uh, so, we will carry out some uh, very important calculations, but before that uh, let me give you a glimpse of uh, what is called as a central limit theorem. I will not go into details of that, just give you the statement and tell you what uh, a normal distribution is. So, a uh, central limit theorem um, it states something. So, you, you consider m statistically independent observables which are O i and then the theorem states that the probability density of the observable O q p is normally distributed. So, how is O q p which is the observable how is it defined? It is defined as sum of all the observables which means that if i denotes the index for the observable. So, this O q p is actually sum of uh, i equal to 1 to m and O i q i p i. So, the main thing is highlighted here in uh, italicized uh, font it is normally distributed. So, what is meant by normally distributed? So, any variable x uh, here of course, we are talking about two variables q and p, but nevertheless uh, they are independent variables. So, uh, this variable x is said to be normally distributed if the corresponding probability distribution that takes a form which is given by this uh, 1 over uh, 2 pi sigma square and um, e to the power minus um, x minus x 0 square by uh, 2 sigma square. I think there is a, a square root there. So, uh, that tells you that this is called as the uh, normal distribution, it is also called as the Gaussian distribution. So, normal Gaussian and often it is called as a bell curve or bell shaped curve. So, as you see that, uh, uh, so the um, mean is at x equal to x 0. So, this is uh, x, this is x axis and this is your row of x. So, it is peaked around uh, some value which is at x 0 and then on both sides of x 0 it falls off uh, you know symmetrically. And um, uh, the first moment of this distribution uh, what I mean by first moment is that uh, you have a row of x uh, and from minus infinity to plus infinity this is called the first moment of the distribution and uh, this is equal to x 0. So, uh, integrate over all x. Okay. Uh, so, this is equal to x 0 and uh, if you take the variance uh, this is called as a variance which is the average value of x minus x average whole square and that gives you a sigma square. So, this is like uh, the you know this variance this is uh, the full width that half maximum called as a sigma. So, if you uh, look at um, this distribution, let me uh, sort of move this somewhere else. So, nth moment of the distribution is written as uh, x n rho x d x from minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, say uh, a teacher tries to analyze that uh, 
uh, after the end term examination or the final examination, he uh, starts analyzing for a large number of students in the class the marks that they have gotten in a particular subject that he or she is teaching. Now, you see that there is a mean there, so there is an average value where most of the students are, uh, I mean, they, uh, the number of students getting mean value or the average value is maximum. As you go away from the maximum on both the directions, the number gradually comes down. So, this is showing a histogram. So, between say 70 and 80, you can think of that this is probably a 150 mark uh, question. Uh, question paper and it. Uh, so, anybody who is getting 0 to 10 is not there. So, there is no one who got uh, 0 to 10 and similarly no one got uh, between 140 to 150. And as you uh, see that the number of students doing very well and doing very poor, these numbers are very small and the distribution of the marks obtained by students uh, basically it is distributed uh, like this and uh, uh, there is a variance that we see which is called as the full width that half maximum and uh, the better uh, the distribution is which means the smaller this sigma is uh, we uh, it is likely uh, that the teacher has done a good job in terms of uh, setting his question and teaching because you want these uh, curve to be as sharp as it can be for a given distribution. All right. So, uh, we will get back to the canonical distribution and uh, we will ask this question what are the average and most probable occupancies in a canonical distribution. And if you are wondering that uh, how did the central limit theorem come, you will see that uh, even this canonical distribution that we are talking about uh, is a sharp distribution and as you deviate uh, from a most probable uh, uh, sort of values of occupancy, uh, then the distribution uh, very quickly tapers off and that that is the whole idea. Okay? So, we consider an ensemble of uh, say identical systems. So, there are n identical systems which are members of the ensemble and uh, this has a total energy of this system is E. Okay. And um, E r uh, is the uh, different energy levels levels and with occupancy n r. Okay. So, what it means is that uh, these uh, available energy states of the system uh, they are occupied by n r number of particles. So, E 1 uh, has n 1 number of particles and E 2 has n 2 number of particles. Now, this 1 and 2 these are dummy indices. So, you can assign any uh, number of particles to uh, any energy level, but subject to the constraint. So, the constraint conditions are is that the total number of particles is constant. So, n r sum over r should be equal to capital N which is the total number of particles and not only that because the, uh, the total system or rather the combined system A and A prime that is isolated uh, or rather insulated from the surroundings. So, we can have these uh, E r n r equal to E. Let us call this as equation 1 and these are the constraint conditions that we have. So, uh, any set n r uh, that satisfies 1, uh, basically that is uh, you know uh, is a possible mode of the distribution. What I mean is the following.
So, let us uh, consider three energy levels. Okay? So, these are E 1, E 2 and E 3 and we have 10 particles. So, what we can do is that we can uh, keep 6 particles here and 2 particles here and 2 particles here or we can keep 3 particles here and 4 particles here and 3 particles here. We can keep uh, 8 particles here, 1 here and 1 here and we can keep 4 particles here, 4 here and 2 here and then there are a large number of ways that we can distribute 10 particles in uh, 3 available energy states. Now, all these are going to contribute to this, uh, you know, to this distribution that we are talking about subject to this constraint which is uh, 1. Now, you see the constraint is 1 because the total number of particles is 1 and then we have not dis, uh, told you what are the values of E r, but we can always uh, have uh, values of E r such that, you know, we get a total energy E. I have not specified what total energy is, then we have to multiply these numbers and, and see that they uh, have the same value. Uh, so, all these may not be possible if you uh, further specify E 1, E 2 and E 3 their values, because uh, uh, you have to uh, multiply the number of particles with that value of energy say in joule or in electron volt and then get the same number. Anyway, so uh, you have a very large number of possibilities to achieve this constraint condition by distributing your nr number of particles among uh, er available energy states of the system. Okay. And um, the way uh, this can be done, uh, so the, uh, the different uh, or the possible modes of the system or the possible modes of this distribution are. Uh, we can write it as this and uh, we will write it as this curly bracket n r, it means something. Uh, so, we have uh, n 1 uh, factorial, n 2 factorial and so on. So, uh, this is uh, the different possible uh, distribution or possible modes uh, that this, uh, this assignment of particles in different energy levels that can be done. Okay? Now, all these uh, modes or all these possibilities are equally likely to occur. Having said that, it is also true that for getting uh, fixed values, uh, sort of uh, fixed values for the thermodynamic parameters, it is important that uh, these uh, there is a, a most probable distribution among all these equally probable ones as well. I mean, what it means is that not all of them contribute equally to the distribution. There is a, a, a few distributions or a large number of distributions which are more important than others because that assignment of particles in different energy levels uh, that is going to give us the value of pressure, volume and temperature or whatever thermodynamic quantities that we are. Um, considering. Okay. So, out of this distribution, let us say that there is some distribution which is most likely to occur. So, once again I repeat that even though each of the distributions that we, uh, that we talked about, uh, like here say for example, uh, all of them are equally likely to occur. But maybe uh, one that you see here, okay? I mean here means this this distribution, okay? Not this one. This distribution may be more uh, likely to occur, or it's a more probable distribution. And uh, these um, uh, distribution is going to give me the uh, the thermodynamic quantities that are measured in experiments, okay? So what it means is that. Uh, this gives us this W n r star is maximum. So, that mode is maximum or that comes with the maximum frequency and we considered that distribution of particles to be a particular distribution n r star 
and the assumption or rather uh, a priori I can tell you that uh, you know this uh, is the distribution that is most important and as you deviate from this distribution uh, the other possibilities of W uh, n are those uh, contribute very little to the problem. Okay. So, uh, the distribution is sharp that is what is most important. Okay. All right. So, now uh, let us calculate the mean value let me uh, go to a new page mean value of different distribution sets. All right. Uh, so, what I mean by this is that what is n r that is the average value of the distribution mean means average the word mean whenever you see that it means average. Okay. So, this is what we want to calculate and we know the weight weight is given by w n r. So, we have these sum over all these n r uh, possibilities when I write it in a curly bracket which means it takes into account all the possibilities of n r uh, to be distributed in uh, different e r uh, energy levels. So, n r w of n r and uh, sum over uh, n r and this weight itself. So, this is a definition of average value and uh, we have told this a number of times because this uh, is a weighting factor this uh, mode or frequency or the weight is given by W and then uh, you calculate the average by this. So, we want to calculate what is what is n r star for which uh, this W uh, w of n r is sharply peaked. It means the same thing that what is the most probable uh, distribution of particles. Okay. So, what we do is that uh, we are going to um, minimize this uh, minimize this means minimize this uh, expression uh, which is uh, expression number 2. So, how do we minimize certain thing? We take the derivative with respect to uh, the parameter that is being varied and see that put that equal to 0 and then uh, calculate how uh, that is uh, you know uh, for what value of n r star uh, this has a uh, maximum. Okay. We can actually check uh, an extremum, but most of the time that uh, we uh, take a derivative it gives you either a minimum or a maximum and in this particular case we are interested in the maximum. Uh, if you really want to see that it, it is maximum then you have to take a double derivative and that should come out as negative because uh, the distribution should be curved such that uh, as you are you know at the top of the distribution. So, you, you actually the curvature gives you negative for a maximum value whereas, for a minimum value the curvature is positive. Okay. Anyway, we will uh, skip that discussion for now and uh, what we do is that we um, sort of write down uh, the log of this distribution. In fact, taking a log is uh, better and uh, this is equal to. Um, so, if, if you look at this 2 uh, you see so, it is a log of n factorial minus log of n 1 factorial minus log of n 2 factorial and so on and then we will use uh, what is called as the this um, Stirling's formula in order to uh, calculate this quantity. And uh, you will see that uh, a bit of simplification uh, is possible here and what one gets is that log of uh, w is equal to n log n n r uh, log of uh, n r. Okay. So, for each one of them so r goes from 1 to uh, n. Okay. Now, uh, when we uh, try to take a, a differential of this that is how uh, so uh, it changes as n r is slightly varied. Okay. So, which means that uh, what happens to w uh,
when n r changes from n r to delta n r. That is a little bit of change occurs. Let us see how that changes and that can be calculated. Uh, so, it is a, a delta l n w. Uh, now, uh, if you take the, uh, the first term, the delta of the first term that is equal to 0. So, we will not write that. Uh, but now we will write this as uh, uh, nr plus uh, delta nr um, and uh, log of nr. Now, I have only taken this uh, derivative or uh, we can simply uh, subtract this. So, we will have, so we just take a small derivative. So, keeping the uh, derivative of delta n r or rather differential of delta n r not derivative the differential of delta n r uh, log of uh, n r and then uh, we will keep uh, the delta n r to be uh, constant and take this derivative uh, which gives us n r uh, of I mean uh, take a derivative of uh, log of n r with respect to n r. So, this will give uh, uh, this and so we uh, land up with a simple formula which is equal to a uh, sum over r uh, delta n r uh, log of uh, n r plus 1. Okay? So, that is the small uh, deviation of the distribution because of a small change in the particle number in each of the uh, available energy states. Okay? Now, uh, this uh, is subject to the fact that because the total number of particles is equal to a constant. So, delta n r should be equal to 0 and not only that you should also have e r delta n r should be equal to 0 because of this small change in the number of particles that we consider because the total number of particles is constant, the total energy is constant. So, this has to be uh, in conformity with this with these two conditions constraint conditions. So, now what happens is that what we do is that uh, let us call it equation 5. So, we will put delta uh, log w uh, equal to 0. Why do we put equal to 0? Because we want to extremize the distribution. So, we will put that equal to 0 uh, subject to these conditions and that can be done uh, by uh, introducing two Lagrange's undetermined multipliers one corresponding to the total number of particles being constant, the other corresponding to the total energy being constant. So, this condition that delta uh, l n w equal to 0 is nothing but uh, this is equal to a minus. Uh, so, this occurs for n r equal to n r star. Okay? So, uh, this gives us uh, this is your uh, log of n r star um, plus 1 and minus alpha uh, and minus beta e r and a delta n r equal to 0. I just want to draw your attention one more time here. We had only this term, we could have put this term equal to 0, but this term is not an independent condition. It has to be satisfied along with the total number of particles being constant which means the delta n r has to be 0. So, this sum that you write here or that you see here uh, is not an independent sum, but it is subject to these two conditions which are written here. So, let me write them as equation uh, 6. Uh, this is say 6 a and 6 b. So, this is equation 6 a and this is 6 b and uh, this is because of equation 6 a and this is because of equation 6 p that we have two Lagrange's undetermined multiplier. Uh, they appear there along with the uh, other things, uh, other, I mean the original uh, the expression that we had. And now, uh, we have written n r equal to n r star because this um, extremization occurs at a particular value. So, when you put that equal to 0, so then n r becomes equal to n r star. All right. Now, uh, for satisfying this equation which has a right hand side equal to 0, uh, the only way that it can be done or that it can be satisfied is that uh, you can uh, write down this um, 
the term in the curly bracket to be equal to 0. There is no other way because delta n r is arbitrary that delta n r is not equal to 0. That is any arbitrary uh, small number in that is a number fluctuation in uh, the number of particles in each energy state. So, we write this as n r star is equal to minus uh, alpha plus 1 uh, minus beta e r. Uh, this alpha plus 1 can be taken as a new constant and we can write it as alpha prime, but there is nothing very uh, sort of sacrosanct about alpha and alpha prime. So, we will keep writing it as alpha. So, which means that the n r star becomes a constant and exponential minus beta e r. So, uh, this alpha plus 1 becomes a new constant and then everything put together uh, I mean uh, this c is the constant uh, for. Uh. So, what it means is that we have been able to find a distribution of particles which is most likely to occur and uh, this is most likely to occur so that we get the equilibrium thermodynamic quantities you know as outcomes of experiments. Okay. So, uh, n r star which is this most probable value. So, n r star is the most probable um, I mean number of particles or uh, that maximizes the distribution. W. Okay. So, n r star by n uh, this is equal to uh, exponential minus beta e r and divided by sum over r exponential minus beta e r. So, we remind you that this is what we got as the uh, number of uh, uh, this uh, probability density that our system occupies a given energy state and this comes out same. Uh, for the average or the most probable distribution uh, where uh, this n r number of particles will populate uh, energy level e r. Okay. All right. So, this uh, gives you the internal structure of the gas that is this gives you how many particles are um, are going to be there was a the most uh, probable distribution of the particle. So, this, this gas uh, comprises of uh, the particles distributed in this particular fashion. So, uh, once we have calculated the uh, this average occupancy, uh, we can call uh, the average uh, energy per particle um, that is easy to calculate now. Uh, so, this is per particle and that is equal to E over n. So, E over n is again has to be uh, you know uh, calculated. Uh, so, let us call this as uh, uh, for example, let me call this as u. So, E over n equal to u which is nothing but equal to sum over r E r into this probability density exponential minus b with, uh, beta E r and uh, r exponential minus beta E r. So, this, uh, this gives you the average energy per particle and uh, this beta is nothing but equal to 1 over k t which is what we have said. Uh, so, that is called as the inverse temperature k is the Boltzmann constant. Uh, we, I write it with a sub b so that uh, this, uh, if there is any other k uh, you do not get confused with that. All right. Now, this easier way of or rather little manipulation can be done in order to uh, write this. So, this is a del del beta of log and then there is a sum over r exponential minus beta e r. So, uh, that is the uh, expression for u and uh, this is an important uh, expression that is for the internal energy of the system. Uh, let me write this as equation 7 and uh, this as equation 8. Okay. So, this is the internal energy of the system. Now, what uh, is more commonly used in uh, these canonical distribution or this discussion of uh, uh, in the present context is that there is a Helmholtz free energy which is nothing but u minus T 
s okay and this is uh, equal to so if you take a df uh, so this becomes equal to du minus tds minus sdt uh, use the first and second law du equal to um, tds uh, minus pdv um, and minus tds again minus sdt and so on so forth so tds will cancel out and you uh, are left with del f uh, df equal to minus pdv uh, minus sdt so that uh, gives you s is equal to minus uh, del f del t um, n and v of course it gives you other uh, definitions such as pressure etc so pressure here is equal to minus del f del v and n and t all right uh, so this is uh, what we get uh, and we have already gotten uh, internal energy expression now uh, what you can do is that you can write down this u is equal to f plus t s which is equal to t minus t uh, del f del t uh, that is replacing the entropy it's n and v uh, there is a little bit of uh, algebra or rather uh, manipulation can be done there is just a mathematical manipulation uh, to get an expression closed expression for f. So, this is equal to del del t by f of t. So, you can easily prove that that this is equal to the, the line that you see above um, sorry this is f not t f minus. So, it is f minus t uh, del f del t and so on uh, and this is again uh, del of f by t uh, del of 1 by t okay. and um, Again, you can just check these things, these are very trivial steps and um, uh, because your beta equal to uh, 1 over k t, uh, your f comes out to be equal to minus k t and then I mean you, this is nothing but equal to this expression that we have written earlier, uh, uh, equation 8 minus d d beta of uh, minus d d beta of uh, you know log of uh, e to the power minus beta e r and uh, there is a there is a sum over r there okay. So, uh, you can compare these two equations say uh, these I have written this so it is easy to see that this is equal to log of sum over r e to the power minus beta e r and uh, this is a very important expression in um, canonical distribution. So, this is the uh, free energy Helmholtz free energy in the canonical distribution and um, so we can define a quantity called as z uh, called as partition function. So, define this and uh, I will write it n just to make sure that this for constant n that is the number of particles not being exchanged and it is a function of v and t which is equal to r exponential minus beta e r. So, this is called as the partition function or the canonical partition function and this partition function is a central theme of discussion for uh, quite a bit of discussion that uh, would follow. So, uh, and this is, um, so this is nothing but uh, sum over r e to the power minus e r over k t and uh, the free energy is obtained from this and once you obtain free energy uh, then you can obtain a number of thermodynamic quantities. So, the trick is to first obtain for a canonical distribution first obtain the uh, canonical partition function by evaluating this sum uh, we will uh, discuss many cases um, in the coming uh, you know classes. So, that you understand how to evaluate this sum in a closed form and in most of the situations that we deal with uh, the there is a closed uh, form for this sum is available and uh, once we get that we can calculate free energy from free energy we can calculate entropy we can calculate um, for example. Uh, uh, 
F uh, that is uh, sorry uh, P that is pressure, we can calculate uh, specific heat and we can calculate pretty much uh, every thermodynamic quantity. So, we will stop here and we will continue uh, with uh, various uh, examples just like what we have done for the micro canonical case, we will uh, talk about various examples uh, to, uh, to do with uh, the canonical distribution. Thank you.